Okay, so Junior Roberts, we're going to be continuing. So this is part two of the question. So we worked part one, which include questions A and B. So I will place the link in the description so you can go and watch that video if you haven't yet done so. Now in this question it says that at what height must the player control the ball in order for the pass to be completed. So we would have went ahead and actually found out the time it took the time it will take for the ball to uh, travel right so we found the time of flight of the ball we also went and found the distance or in other words how far from the striker the ball will land now we found out that the ball lands 1.3 meters from the striker so if we consider a simple sketch right let us say so let's say this is the striker right here. Let's say we made a striker blue. So this is the striker. Right? Let's say that's a striker there. What we're seeing is that the ball is expected to land uh let's say 1.3 meters meters from the player. Now we want to know, okay. If the ball is traveling, it's gonna go something like this, all right, um, in order to reach that point. So this player now would have to control the ball in the air. So we want to know what's that height that the player will actually have to control the ball. So what we need to do is we need to find out, okay, how long the ball will take to reach the player. So we can consider motion in the horizontal, so let's say we consider our horizontal motion, and we know for the horizontal motion that the velocity is constant. Right? The velocity in the horizontal motion is constant, so and there's no acceleration in the horizontal plane. So we can write S is equal to U cos theta times T. So S is equal to U cos theta T. So therefore, now we can use this expression to find a value for t for the time it takes for the ball to travel 30 meters. So therefore, now we're going to get that t is equal to s divided by u cos theta. So now, all we do now, we just plug in our values. So let's say s is 30 meters and u is 20 meters per second. We take the cosine of 25, which, are, which is our angle, and let's put this into our calculator. So we say 30, 30 divided by 20 times cosine 25, and we get a value of 1 point, I'm going to record this as 1.66 seconds. So that's the time of flight and we can remember that the time for the ball to travel horizontally 30 meters will be the same time the ball will take to travel up to its maximum height and down to whatever this height is which the player will actually control the ball so we can then now look at motion in the vertical so let's put this to the side here so now we're going to look at vertical motion <coughs> Right? So for the vertical motion, we can write S is equal to U sine theta minus a half G T squared. So now, all we do now is just plug in, in our values. So we're going to have 20 sine 25 minus a half G. G is 9.8, so we're going to say a half of 9.8, which is just 4.9 multiplied by t squared, oh, for, for, I forgot the t right here, there should be a t right here. So let me fix this. So t now is the time it takes for the ball to travel 30 meters so that the player can control it from a height above the ground. So that time was 1.66 uh, seconds, and we're minusing a half g t squared, so half of g is 4.9. So 4.9 times 1.66. We're taking the square of that. So 
let's simplify so we say 20 sine 25 times 1.66 and this gives us a value of 14.0 this is 14.0 uh, minus 4.9 times 1.66 squared and the value we get is 13.5 now when we subtract these two values we're going to see that our vertical displacement s is going to be 14 minus 13.5 is 0 0.5 meters so what it simply means is that the player will have to control the ball at a height of 0 0.5 meters above the ground so that's our answer for this one so let's see what's next so next they say what is the velocity of the ball when it is controlled now if we were to recall so remember just now we said that in the horizontal plane velocity is constant so we can consider that same idea that vx which is the final velocity or the velocity of the ball when it is controlled will be equal to u cos theta which is our initial horizontal velocity so this number becomes 20 cos 25 and from the calculator we say 20 cos 25 <coughs> and this is 18.1 meter per second now for the vertical norm so this was the horizontal here for the vertical norm right we will consider that v y squared is equal to u y squared minus 2 a s where a is our acceleration due to gravity so this number comes v y squared is equal to u y is u sine theta and we're taking the square of that minus 2 times a which is 9.8 and s is our vertical displacement so we just found out the vertical displacement as 0 0.5 so we're going to have this as 0 0.5 then now we can simplify so u sine theta is simply 20 sine 25 squaring that minus 2 times 9.8 times 0 0.5 so this now will evaluate so let's so we take the calculator and we say 20 sine 25 right we get 8.5 and this is squared minus 2 times 0.5 is 1 so we're going to have 9.8 right there so now when we take the square of 8.5, let's see what we get. So 8.5 squared and we minus 9.8 and we get 62.5. So V in the vertical squared is equal to 62.5. So therefore V Y now must be equal to the square root of 62.5 and we see that vy works out to be so we take the square root of 62.5 and we get 7.9 meters per second and again the object is going down so this is minus 7.9 meters per second now to find the velocity of the object we need to find the resultant so we have our y or our vertical um component we have our horizontal component right here now we need to find the resultant so we can say now that the velocity v will be equal to the square root of vx squared plus vy squared so now as a result of that we get 18.1 squared plus minus 7.9 squared and we have to take the square root of all of this so now if we work this out, we're going to get V is equal to, let's do, use the calculator. So it's 18.1 squared 
plus negative 7.9. We know when we square a negative value, we're going to get positive, and this is squared, and we'll get 390. So we take the square root now of 390, and this value works out that v is equal to square root of 390, 390, and we get 19.7 meters per second. So the velocity of the ball when the player controls it will be 19.7 meters per second. So again, this is Junior Roberts with realjuniorroberts.com. If there are any questions in this video that you wish to get further clarification on, post it in comments, and I'll do my best to clear up any misconception. Like this if it was helpful, click subscribe on the bell, so you're notified whenever I post new videos like this. Thank you for watching.